What I want to explain to you today is uh, how to use this 10 degree pointer that uh, our body has automatically uh, given us. Now, I don't know if Leonardo da Vinci uh, knew all these angles and dangles on the human body, but he knew a lot of them. And one I've discovered is that when you've got your uh, target right in front of you, and you point your thumb at it. If you have your thumb uh, uh, parallel to your fist, it's about 10 degrees from the thumb to the outside. So if you're looking right at your uh, target and you've got a crosswind, say, coming from over here, it, you can measure the angle by simply rotating your hand from 10 to 20 degrees to 30 degrees to 40 degrees to 50 degrees. And when we get to 60 degrees, we can stop computations because we can use this rule of thumb, thumb and four fingers, that only the first five increments, the first 50 degrees of crosswind, are going to have us make a computation for a crosswind component. Because after 60 degrees, this other 30 degrees out here, because of the uh, trigonometry of the winds and the mathematics, we have a full value or 100% uh, factor. Now, when I'm measuring this off, there's an easier way to kind of look at it. And I'll get Christy to look over my shoulder and let y'all see it. Really? When we're using uh, this 10 degree pointer in the horizontal plane here, what I mean when I say 10 degree increments is that the fist width is 10 degrees, then 20 degrees, then 30 degrees, then 40 degrees, then 50 degrees, then 60, and so on to measure. But only these first 50 degrees are going to really be a factor for our shooting because all the way over in here the winds are so strong geometrically that we use 100% value. Let's go outside and I'll show you the, what I'm talking about. Sierra Rains, a hunter, guide, uh, associate with Ed Giblish in Triangle T Outfitting. And I'd like to share with y'all a thing that uh, I used both in flying and in shooting to measure the angle of a crosswind and to compute uh, the component, the effective amount of that of wind that we need to make an adjustment for. Now, I'll guarantee you that in flying, uh, extremely high crosswind, it's very stressful. You want to make a, a nice yet safe landing for your pastures. And in hunting, uh, we have the synthetic stress of uh, buck fever, whatever, adding to it. The, the way to overcome that is with little techniques like this KISS principle. Now, KISS is simply an acronym for Keep It Simple Stupid. Uh, in the crosswind component thing, uh, I use uh, the arm's length pointer of my thumb and finger. We've determined that. Uh, it's about 10 degrees between your thumb and your little finger. So if I have a target right at you and the wind blowing from over here and I know the direction from telltale on my rifle or the dirt, I can simply measure the angle off by measuring 10 degree in increments from 10 degrees, 20, 30, 40, 50, Beyond 50 degrees, there's no sense measuring it because effectively between 60 and 90 degrees, you have 100% component. That's just the way the geometry works out. Now, once you measure the angle, then you need to compute the portion of the component. And once again, we can use a rule of thumb that we're going to make 5, 10, 20, 30, 40, and 50 computations and they're going to be over 60 degrees. So 10 over 60, 20 over 60, 30 over 60, 40 over 60, 50 over 60. 60 degrees and beyond, it's 100%. Let's say we have 20 mile per hour uh, wind blowing and it's 40 degrees off, 40 over 60 is 2 thirds, 2 thirds of 20 is almost 14, we'd have 14 miles per hour crosswind component 
into making an adjustment for in our shoot. Now with the Huskamal's wonderful optics on their turret, we can know how many uh, yards from our laser rangefinder, and then we know how many uh, knots of wind we have to make an adjustment for. We can make the minute of angle adjustment on the turret and the shot's away. It's about that simple. Now, in all honesty, uh, I've got buddies that give me a hard time about maybe I'm measuring this with a tube before, marking it with a grease pencil, and cutting it with an axe. My friends, uh, as a Air Force and American Airlines pilot, I can tell you that the control tower at even the most major airport in the world gives you an average wind for the last two minutes. So this is a dynamic situation, and we need to make a guideline and then use the art of shooting to finesse it at the end. If you took a picture of that river, you'd know what it was doing at that instant. The current would be different in seconds, and the wind is hydraulic the same way. So don't let the paralysis of analysis get you too bound up. You've got to make an adjustment, make a reasonable adjustment, and practice.